Hey guys, it's Bridgette with Sandy Seed Company, and we're in my greenhouse, and this episode, we're gonna be talking about what tomatoes am I really excited about for the 2024 season? Why am I looking forward to growing them? What special qualities or characteristics do they have? But before I jump into that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified anytime we put out a garden. Oops, not a garden. Anytime we put out a video so I can help you grow in your garden. Okay, so we have tons of tomatoes in our greenhouse. And if you've watched the other videos, you know that these are like way too big. Don't judge me. We got a little squirrely this year. It happens, I think, every year. But we have tons of new varieties that we're trialing on the farm. And I want to talk about a couple of them that I'm really excited about. It doesn't mean that these are available or that these will even be available for the 2025 planting season because they may not make the cut. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that there's hundreds of thousands of varieties of tomatoes out there and some of them kind of stink, right? And we have very specific standards that we look at when judging a tomato. Flavor, disease resistance, yield, size, how compact is it? How easy is it to grow in a small urban setting? How well does it do in zone 9 and 10? Does it have any drought tolerance? The list goes on and on but we rank our tomatoes by all of these different characteristics and that helps us decide what to carry and what not to carry. So some of the ones that I have here that we have done research on and that we're really excited about are, well, the first one, I hope I'm saying it right. You can judge me if I say it wrong. I say a lot of things wrong all the time, <laughs> but the Datorino, which is an Italian paste tomato. We are most excited about that because of its stability, its shelf stability. After we pick it, it'll last quite a long time, which we need because we, do, we make a lot of tomato sauce every year on the farm. So this is a really exciting variety that has a long history and has a lot of the characteristics that we are looking for in a really good paste tomato. High yield, good flavor, it melts down into a nice velvety saucy tomato. Obviously I've tried these before, I've, I've eaten them, but how well are they going to do on the farm? That's key, right? Some other ones that we're super excited about is the, the one and only Dirty Girl. <laughs> I gotta tell you, like the name really caught me. I was like, what is this about? It's a dehybridized early girl. So it's basically kind of the crazy wild cousin of the hybrid early girl. And it's an OP, so an open pollinated variety. And we're really excited to try it to see how much of the early girl characteristics it's held on to, and if there's a place in our catalog for it. So early girl, as many of you may know, is a really popular hybrid tomato. In fact, if you go to any big box store, they're probably going to be selling you early girl tomatoes. They're very reliable, they do well even in cooler climates, and they, are, they produce some of the most early red round tomatoes of the season. Now, by dehybridizing them, basically taking these and saving the seeds from an F1, the babies of that generation become the dehybridized version. So it's basically the offspring of them. They're not stable. They can show, throw off some very crazy characteristics, but this is actually a really fun way in which we can get new unique varieties from commercial varieties that we bring into the gardening realm. So I said earlier, open pollinated. All that means is that I can save the seeds from these and after a few generations, they should become stable. So open pollinated is different from F1 in that the babies will look more or less like the parent plant. That is what open pollinated means. So this project is a little bit of a wild card. You never know, but sometimes that's when the coolest and most fun things come out of the farm and the garden. And Dirty Girl has been recommend to, recommended to us over and over, over the seasons, and we finally found a spot for it on the farm. So those are two very cool varieties. And then if we come over here, we have two varieties that we've actually grown on the farm before, and they did make the cut, and they're going in for a second round of trialing. So we have Dixie Giant, which is an incredible, huge tomato, like the name refers, Dixie Giant. Super juicy, very flavorful, a great slicing tomato. These are indeterminate tomatoes, which means there's a lot of trellising and a lot of labor that goes into growing these, but the flavor is worth it. So we're going to grow it again. 
Dixie Giant and another one that we only grew a few plants of, but it really blew our mind was a variety called Red Reef. And that's R-E-I-F or I-E-F. Again, I can't spell very well. But I'm sure we'll tag it in the video. It's a really neat variety. Again, very big, juicy tomato. And it has that quintessential, delicious, red, homegrown tomato flavor that's, that's got a balance of acidity and sweetness that really like explodes in your mouth. This is another indeterminate variety, which means I gotta do a lot of trellising. There's a lot of labor that has to happen in stringing these guys up, but it was well worth it. And we're hoping to have a production of seed of these so that we can offer them to you in 2025. So some of you that come to the channel for education might be thinking, well, I didn't learn anything. Well, I'm hoping that you do learn something from this video, and that's understanding how a seed company works and what my role is in that seed company. I take it very seriously that my job is to go and find varieties that do really well in zone nine and 10. And that's not just like listening to old farmer Joe tell me X, Y, and Z. That's actually taking the information, running the trials, collecting the data, sometimes for multiple years to decide whether or not that variety is good enough for my beloved customers. That's something I take really seriously and takes many years. I'll give you another quick little example. I'm really excited about these tomatoes over here. These are actually a variety of tomato that were given to me from a breeder at the University of Hawaii. And what we're testing them for is resistance to root knot nematode in an open pollinated plant, not a hybrid. This is something that's gonna take many years. I stumbled upon this seed at a conference, got in contact with the breeder, we've been working together, and now hopefully one day, I will be able to offer you a tomato that grows better in your garden despite the root knot nematodes you may or may not have. So this is just a small look into what we do as a seed company and how we can help you grow in your garden. So if any of you guys attended our talk that we did at the National Heirloom Expo in Ventura, California, we did a talk on participatory plant breeding. And basically what that means is allowing people to participate in the plant breeding we do as a seed company. Well, you can actually do that too. And it's very simple. Just comment on this video and tell me what have you been growing that you're totally in love with? What is a crop or a variety that you think we should be carrying that we're not? What's a variety that maybe you think there, should, there could be potential, but it needs to be improved? These are things that I will actually go through and I'll read those comments and take that information and who knows, maybe a tomato that you really love one day will make it into our catalog.